Here are seven cheap lizards, perfect for beginners, and for those of you who don't want a lizard that's gonna be so hard to take care of. Let's step into number seven on the list, green anoles. However you wanna say it, anoles, anoles, doesn't matter. These are awesome green lizards that are so available, you can find them at most chain pet stores, which they're mostly always wild caught, but if you can find a captive bred one at an expo, or even at a reptile store where you know it's a captive bred animal, that's even way better. Green anoles don't really require that much caging. A 20 gallon is perfect for one green anole, and they are more of an arboreal species, so you'll want to have like a 20 gallon tall. You'll just have to put one of those conversion kits like the ones that I use here, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Green anoles primarily eat insects, and I think it's so cool to watch them eat because they'll just hone in and attack like little tiny raptors. Green anoles are a very forgiving species and they don't require a whole bunch to take care of them. These are some of the easiest reptiles to breed and it's really cool because if there's nobody in your town that's producing captive bred green anoles, then that's an opportunity for you to actually provide people with those captive bred animals. I will say that that will be more competitive just because you can get a wild caught green anole at a pet store for like five bucks. So you're not gonna make a lot of money if you're trying to mass produce green anoles and sell them and become a million. That's not gonna happen. Uh, you'll probably sell captive bred green anoles for like seven to 10 bucks. They have this really cool thing, kind of like how chickens do. It's called a dewlap, and they use it for a lot of different types of communication. Green anoles are all around just a really great animal to have as a beginner. I mean, look how green they are, they're awesome. Number six on the list is bearded dragons. Bearded dragons do require a larger enclosure, but not so big that you're gonna just end up being overwhelmed. Uh, 75 to 100 gallon tank would be perfect for a bearded dragon, just because they do love to burrow and climb. They need a lot of room to move around, but they're so mass produced that you can find a bearded dragon for like 10, 20 bucks. So if you're looking for a really cool pet, but you don't mind getting a bigger enclosure for them, then bearded dragons are awesome. They'll eat greens and insects, and they don't really move around a lot. They like to hang out on your shoulder, so if you're somebody who doesn't like a skittish reptile, then bearded dragons are pretty much the best one for you because they will sit on your shoulder for hours, they'll fall asleep, you can teach them tricks, you can... They're basically a dog. They should be called dog dragons. They do require UVB and one of the biggest things to watch out for is to make sure that when they shed, that you get the shed completely off of their tails and their fingertips just because that's a common problem with them. They can fall off. Just make sure that you take care of your British dragon and it'll be an awesome pet for you. Number five on the list is the Emerald Tree Skink. Now this is another very green species that stays really small and I love that because green is one of my favorite colors and they're just the coolest looking skinks out there. They don't need a huge enclosure, but they do need like an 18 by 18 by 36, which is equivalent to about a 40 gallon breeder tank. And they do like to climb, so you want to give them that opportunity to climb as well. You'll feed them things like mealworms, dubia roaches, and crickets. They also eat some greens and some fruits, but you don't want to feed them too much of that because that can also cause some health problems. And if you do breed them, or if you just have them as babies, you can actually give babies crested gecko diet and they will also eat that. I would recommend like the insects and fruit crested gecko diet. That would be the best for them. They're a very personable and engaging animal. They like to go and explore and they're very curious. So they'll actually go up to you and actually crawl on your hand without you even having to pick them up. They're really cool. You do want to provide them with a basking area. You want to provide them with UBB and they do need a higher humidity. Uh, not so much, but um, I would say anywhere from 50 to 75. And one of the more important parts about these emerald tree skeins is that they are starting to become more readily available. So anywhere from $40 to about $120 you can find them for, which is I think very reasonable as a reptile that is green and beautiful and awesome and just all around a great animal. Number four on the list are African fire skinks. Now I might be having to get an African fire skink because this thing is freaking awesome. I didn't know that African fire skinks existed but when I started to read about them I just it blew my mind. Red as some of you know is my favorite color and 
these fire skinks just hit it on the nail. I mean, they're awesome. They're a very docile reptile to handle. They don't really like to move around a lot. Um, they have really big bodies and small arms, which I think is very cute. They're great for somebody who wants something unique, but also doesn't really want a snake. They get a little bit over a foot, about 15 inches, and they do eat insects, primarily mealworms, dubia roaches, crickets, uh, whatever else you want to feed them. And the same as the emerald tree skinks, these only require a 40 gallon breeder. Bigger is always better, but you can keep one in a 40 gallon breeder. This is also a very cheap species. They are a little bit harder to find, but if you go to a reptile expo, I'm pretty sure you can find a fire skink for anywhere from $40 to $100, depending on whether it's wild caught or captive bred. I think I might get one of those, but I also say that I'm going to get every reptile, which will happen someday. Number three on the list is the leopard gecko. Now, I know I've talked about leopard geckos in my past video, um, but I wanted to talk about them again today just because leopard geckos are such an amazing animal. Um, I have two of them that came in as a rescue and they've just been awesome. I mean, even though the people that I got them from, um, whoever was keeping them was only feeding them every two weeks, they still did fairly okay. You should never go that long without feeding your leopard gecko. They're a very hardy animal as long as you take care of them correctly. They stay relatively small and they are a nocturnal species, so they don't really require UVB. There are studies that show that UVB can benefit a lot of different reptiles, especially leopard geckos. There's been a study on them that if you give them UVB a little bit in the morning, they do considerably better than if you just keep them without UVB. They're such an easy animal to breed, and there's so many different morphs that nowadays you can get very beautiful and colorful morphs for anywhere from like 20 to like 60 bucks. Number two on the list is the Aki Monitor. Now I know there's probably people typing down below like Aki Monitors are not a beginner reptile, don't do that. Okay, Aki Monitors I think are a perfect beginner reptile for those that are wanting to get into monitor lizards. Aki Monitors don't get very big, they stay very very small, and they're a very smart and active monitor. They're basically a Komodo dragon in fun size. You can feed them things like insects, other feeders like mice. I've even seen people give them pieces of chicken too. UVB is best for these reptiles as well. And you can find a couple different colors as well. Number one on the list is the Euromastix. Now, if you're looking for something like a bearded dragon, but you want something more unique, a Euromastix I think is the best reptile for you because they're very cool looking. The wild types are like yellow and red. They do need a high temperature basking and they do need UVB. So again, it's kind of like a bearded dragon. They'll primarily be eating plant matter like kale and like other greens like that, but you don't want to feed them too much kale because that can like absorb the calcium or something like that. And it's really weird, but they can also eat bird seeds, which I don't know why you would be feeding a Euromastix bird seeds. Euromastix would require a large enclosure just like bearded dragons because they do need a temperature gradient. Most of the Euromastix that you'll find are wild caught, but if you can find a captive bred, that's going to be way better. But if you go on Morph Market, you can find some pretty easily for about $100 to $200. And hey, if you're not really into lizards like the ones on these lists, well, I got other list videos that I think you would really enjoy. Some are about geckos and some are about snakes. Go ahead and click those videos next.